So there's a bit of a problem that a lot of intermediate players have that needs to be addressed. And it's this, in minor keys, they're pretty confident at soloing, but get a bit lost when it comes to major keys. Well, if this is you, the good news is this is really easy to solve. And in this video, we're gonna do just that. I'll show you where to start, how to move around the neck and how to add in some blues flavor. So take a listen to this solo I put together and then we'll break it down. by addressing the biggest mistake people are making when trying to solo in a major key. You see, in a minor key, you'll think, well, here's my E minor chord and then my pentatonic, which is here, right on top of the chord, just like that, it's dead easy. And then you think, well, here's the E major chord, surely the pentatonic shape will be straight on top of that. You look it up and you come up with this. And you think, Ugh, oh, that's horrible, just doesn't feel great under the fingers. And here lies the problem. This shape here, it's kind of the second position pentatonic scale, is really not very nice played there. But there's a different approach we can take, which feels much better under the fingers. So instead of playing the E major chord here at the 12th fret in the E shape, we can come here to the 7th fret and play it in the A shape. And now, what we can do with this is this bar here on the D, G and B strings that we play, keep that in place, but now with the first finger, and this root note here on the A string, the E there, we're going to move up four frets to the major third of G sharp there, with that little bar with our first finger on the other strings, and this move from here to here puts us perfectly in place to play the pentatonic scale in the key of E major. Now you see here at the ninth fret, if we play the first position pentatonic, which you might think of as C sharp minor, but it's actually exactly the same notes as E major because they are relative major and minor keys. So you see here, when we've moved from here up to here, now we're right on top of this first position pentatonic shape there, which we're all a lot more familiar with and fits much easier under the fingers. And as we have our E major chord shape here, it makes it pretty easy for us to see where the chord tones are that belong to that chord. For example, you know, all of these three notes are always going to work over the E major chord because we know they come directly from the chord shape. And that makes it a lot easier to play double stops, for example which is something people often find a bit tricky to know where to play them, but here we know all these notes just work together. So in my solo, you saw me start with this big E2 chord here, and then make the shift up into this position and then use some of those double stops to bring it to life a bit and then just some licks really running through this first position pentatonic scale. Now let's see how we can bring out the brighter, sweeter major sound by adding in some extra notes. Then the next thing we want to think about when we're playing in a major key is not just confining ourselves to the pentatonic scale, but using the full major scale. So from this first position pentatonic, we know there's two notes that we're missing because this is a five note scale, the full major scale is a seven note scale. So we can just add those back in. And the first one we want to add in is the fourth, which is this A here at the 10th fret on the B string. So we can add that in. So we already have the ninth and 12th within our pentatonic first position, but add in the 10th as well. Now, the fourth here, you'll know this from using the sus4, it's a really nice sound, and often you might do that kind of thing on an E major chord, and now all we want to do is bring that into our solo. So we could either just play it directly and play it maybe as a double stop with some other chord tones there, or we could bend up to it like that. I quite like to bend up to it 
and then slide back into the unbent note. Something that just sounds really nice to me. So that's the fourth. Then we can also add the major seventh, which in the key of E major is going to be a D sharp. Now, the easiest way to add this into our first position pentatonic shape is here at the 11th fret on the high E string here. So we already had 9 and 12, C sharp and E, which is going to add this D sharp in between. Now, one thing I really like to do with this is play it and bend it up the half step to hit the E there. to get that kind of lick, which is much more sophisticated than just playing the plain old pentatonic. So once again in my solo, you saw me using these ideas. Firstly, a lick something like that where I'm playing on that fourth to get that sus4 sound and then that bend up on the D sharp just for that little bit of extra sophistication and this just takes it somewhere beyond the pentatonic. Okay so far we're pretty much rooted to this ninth fret here so let's change that. So in terms of moving around the neck a bit more we're going to use a 2 plus 3 diagonal. This is something I've talked about a lot more in depth in other videos so here I'll be quite brief but basically for a major key this works out really nicely because we have the root note and then we play two notes below and two notes above. You'll see what I mean. So here's our root note of E. Now we're going to play two notes below that which is going to be the seventh fret of B and ninth fret C sharp. So we've got those two notes and then the root note and then we've got two notes above F sharp and G sharp. So all together two notes below, root note, two notes above. Now this is called a two plus three diagonal because we've got two and then three on the next string. So that's the full pentatonic scale right there, those five notes just arranged slightly differently. And then we get to here and of course we can keep going up so onto the uh, D string here and we just start again with B and C sharp and then here's our root note of E at the ninth fret on the G and then two notes above F sharp and G sharp so one two one two three and then up again we start here the twelfth fret on the B string for the B there's our two notes below our root note and then two notes above so all together we get And this scale then comes across the neck going up the strings but also you know getting us further up the guitar giving us a lot more flexibility. And now of course because this is the same pattern just repeated in three places so low, middle and high then any lick we play in one part of the guitar we can just easily transpose to another register. So in my solo you saw me doing something like this and then moving up you know it's exactly the same. Then I didn't but I could have gone up again with that exact same lick. So this is a really powerful technique to use and as you can see here in the major key with this two notes below and two notes above it's pretty easy to incorporate into your playing. Then major doesn't always have to be super bright so let's find the blue note and add in some blues flavour. So adding in the blue note here is actually quite straightforward so if we come back to our two plus three diagonal so two notes below our root note and then two notes above all we need to do is add in one extra note above so and then I'm adding in a G natural there so there's the root note so up two frets and then up one up one and now that is the full six note blues scale like so and this G natural that's our blue note you can immediately hear that's a much more bluesy sound get that E major chord and there it is. Then of course this works exactly the same in the other positions on the other strings so coming up to the B and high E strings here are 2 plus 3 diagonal so 2 notes below root note of E and then 2 notes above add the blue note to that there it is and we can use all the same techniques
So we can add in this note. We want to do it quite sparingly. What you saw me doing was just flicking off of it to the note below, which works quite well as just hinting at it rather than lingering on it. But later on, I did do a bit of something like that where I actually bent up on it and then half step bend on the note below, which again gets you to that note. So it's like full step bend up on the blue note and then half step bend on the note below to get back to it and then resolve down to the root there which is a really great little bluesy lick landing on that major root note of E there. Then if you want that ultra bluesy sound, you can of course go to the E minor scale over the E major key. And I ended with a lick something like, something like that, just to show the possibility, but it's kind of out of scope of this video.